Okay, let's start question four. Take two. My first one, I hit the stand and it was everything was shaking. So let's try again. Um, Mr. Fencer bought a farm in order to sell chickens and vegetables. Very wholesome. On Annexure B is the layout plan of the farmyard. So make sure whenever they say that, go find your Annexure. Here's my Annexure. Um, and then continue with the question. So it says, use Annexure B to answer the questions that follow. Name the feature on the layout plan, which has an irregular shape, right? So regular shapes are like triangles and rectangles and squares and circles. Those are all regular. So irregular is something that's not one of those. So you should be able to see immediately but the perennial garden be doing its, a strange thing there, right? Um, so the perennial garden is going to be what is the irregular shape? So I've written that down. Um, make sure that you spell things correctly. You have no excuse not to spell them correctly when they're given, right? Let's continue to the next question. The letter J on the map represents Jojo tanks. Okay, Jojo tanks are like these kind of tanks that um, sort of harvest rainwater and then you can use it for various other purposes. So give a reason why it's important to have a water tank at one's house. So I would just say for water storage, right? Or to save water for future use or so I'm just gonna say water storage, right? I feel like it's not a difficult answer. Um, to give, just give anything that kind of makes sense, right? Don't be like talking about other random stuff. Just say something about water. Um, and also, I mean, rainwater is free compared to tap water. So it's also like good in that, like from an expense perspective, you can kind of manage that. But let's move on to the next one. 4.1.3, Jojo tanks are usually filled with rainwater. Okay. Um, write down two structures where the water to where the water to fill a Jojo tank could possibly come from. So basically, here's the Jojo tanks, right? There's one, there's one, there's a, there's one there. I'm not sure why this Jojo tank here is so light. Maybe it's like an introverted Jojo tank and it wants to like fade into the background. Um, but basically, from Jojo tanks, you have like gutters on various um, buildings and they kind of like flow into the Jojo tanks. So this one would probably be the greenhouse or the livestock barn. So generally, it's going to run off the roof. And this these two Jojo tanks would probably be from the solar greenhouse. So... It only asks for two. So I'm going to say the solar greenhouse, right? Just because there's two Jojo tanks there. But say the solar greenhouse roof, okay? Because it comes off the top, like with gravity. And then I'm going to say the live stock barn roof. You can say the roof or the gutter, basically indicating that as the rainwater comes, it's sort of filtered into the Jojo tank. Okay. So a lot of sort of common sense so far. Let's see if we get into a bit of maths now. So it says for 1.4.4, I mean 4.1.4, goodness. Calculate in meters squared, right? So it told us the area of the garden expansion. You may use the formula half base times height. So the garden expansion is this triangle. So the base is 17,024 meters. And the height is going to be 19,5. So area equals half times base, right? Half times base times height. Let's make sure that you write that in correctly. And even more importantly than that, make sure you type it in correctly. Because that is not going to be too helpful if you type it in incorrectly. So 1 over 2 times by 17.024 times by 1 point... Ooh, no. You're just making up my own numbers, yeah? Okay, so 165.9, and I'm just going to stop there because it specifically asked for, did it say? Um, it didn't actually say how many decimals, but so I'm just going to put all of them. Well, There's not that many, so you can just put it like that. If you want to round it off, you could make it 9, 8, right? But remember with area, we always have to write in our units and square them. Here, our units were meters squared, so we are a for away because we have done everything that they've asked us to do, which is exactly what we want to do. So Mr. Fenter decides to replace the fence around the circular chicken site. Let's just see where that is. That's this little one here. Okay. The circumference of the circular site is 18,852. So the circumference basically means like the perimeter of the circle, right? So that chicken site, that going, if you walk the whole way around it, it'll be 18,852 two meters so he's got two options now to to um uh, buy two cost options for the wire mesh right this here looks like a sausage roll my printer's done me dirty um so option a it is one one five four for ten meters 
Okay, so he'd need to buy two of these, do you agree with me, to make sure that he had sufficient um, um, amount of mesh to um, cover the wall, to put the whole way around the chicken site. And then option B, this is per running meter. So what's important here is that you do it in full meters. So you're going to buy here 19 meters, right? Because you can't buy 18 because then you have too little mesh and all the chickens will just be running everywhere, right? But if you buy 19, then you can go the whole circumference around and have a little bit of extra. Okay. So then it says, by means of calculation, advise Mr. Painter which option is more economical. Basically, which one is cheaper? So let's just do this correctly here. So option A, we're going to say, well, he's probably going to buy 20 meters because 10 meters is not going to be enough. Okay, so he's going to buy 20 meters. So it's going to be 1154 times 2 because if that's for 10 meters, times by 2 is for 20 meters. So that's how much it's going to cost him for that one. 1154 times 2. So that's for option A. Then let's do option B. So option B, we said is 127.30 okay, per running meter, right? But he's going to need 19 of those. So you can times by 19. Put that into your calculator. I don't know if I could do that in my head either. And it's going to be this much, okay? Please remember with cost, you always have to put two decimals. So if there is only one decimal, your second decimal is zero, right? So which one's more economical? We'd say option A is cheaper or more economical, okay? Because it's less. That makes sense? You should be able to see that visually. And so we are done with that question, okay? Let's do our last question for this video, and then we will move on to the second bit of question four. But let's just read what we're asked to do here. One of the Jojo tanks on his farm has a 5,000 litre capacity. Yo, that's a lot. The height of the tank is 220 centimetres. Okay. Then it says, it's telling us that 1,000 centimetres cubed is one litre. Okay, so we know that we're probably going to have to do a bit of um, sort of adjusting here. And, the, and then it says calculate in centimeters, okay, the radius, okay, of the tank. You may use the following formula. So the given is a formula, which is very kind of them. So the volume of the, the tank, so the volume of the tank they've told us, right? Now, I'm not going to say liters. I'm actually going to say centimeters cubed, which is fine, right? Um, actually, it's not fine. I'm going to have to change that. <laughs> so basically, they've given us the volume. They've given us pi. This is effectively pi. We have to work out the radius and they've given us the height. Okay. So we have to put everything into centimeters. So we have to convert that into centimeters first and foremost. Okay. So we know that one liter equals a thousand centimeters cubed. But now we have that many liters, right? 5,000. So what have we done? We've times the side by 5,000. Classic, what you do to the one side, you have to do to the other side. So we're gonna times this side by 5,000, okay? And we're gonna pop that in our calculator. So 5,000 times 1,000. And so it's going to be 5 million. Okay, remember six zeros is a million. So that is basically now the volume of the cylindrical tank, okay? So that's the volume. That's what we're going to put in there. So we're going to say 5 million, ooh, 5 million, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros equals 3.142. So I'm just literally using this times, I'm just going to say radius squared. I'm just going to say R instead of radius times height, and that's going to be 220, okay? So that is basically using this whole thing right, to make sure that we are working correctly, okay, so what we need to do is, this is now a little bit of algebra, which I know math students are like, I'm not sure for that, but you can do this, right, I back you, you just need to do it step by step, so basically we want to solve for this, which when I, in, in math, we say solve, we basically want to isolate that variable and get the value for it, so what we're going to do is firstly, we're going to try and get rid of some of these things, so let's times the 220, okay, let me just make you sure you can see the 220 by 3.142. Oh, okay. So we have 691.24. So I'm just trying to simplify things a little bit for us. Okay. Now that is times by that. Now we want to get R squared by itself. So what is the opposite operation to times? 
Well, it's divide. So I'm going to divide this side by that amount, right? But what I do to the one side, I have to do to the other side, right? So that's going to cancel there. That's basically going to become 1. And it's just going to be r squared by itself. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. But now we need to do the side of the calculation. So we say 5 million divided by that answer. And it gives us this long thing. Okay. 3, 7, 7. Write all of it out. Remember, we only round off at the end. But now, they didn't ask for the radius squared. They just asked for the radius. Now, this is tricky. What is the opposite of a square? Well, it is a square root. Okay, so we're going to square root both sides. If you square root a square, it just leaves us with r. Okay, and that's what we want. So now we have to take this. Now, make sure that you see this. Look, there's a square root. Put your answer. Remember, answer here is basically the number we had previously, which is that number underneath there. Stops me from having to write it in again. And my answer is 85.049, dub, dub, dub. Okay, right? But the question specifically asked, right, for the radius in centimeters, it didn't say how many decimals. Generally, we do two. So let's round it off to two decimals. When we're rounding off to two decimals, we look at the third decimal. The third decimal is above five, so we're going to round up. So we say, therefore, the radius, and it doesn't matter if you change the sides, yeah? It still means the same thing, 85.05 centimeters, and we are done. This is probably the most complex question of this paper. So see whether you can go over it. Maybe go over it a couple of times, but it's all just about operations, right? Opposite operations. I hope you got that. Let's move on to the next question.